Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to kick off. Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you're attending from. We're very happy to have you here today to listen to what I think is a very relevant and, and exciting topic. I'm very happy to introduce two of my colleagues that I've been working with, Peter Franz, who is the CEO of BPMD, and Shoab Javid, who is our Chief Product Officer here at iGraphics. My name is Phil Underhill. I'm the Senior Director for all our EMEA partnerships, and I've had the pleasure of working closely with BPMD over the last 12 months as we've started to grow our partnership and really drive some change into the market. <clears throat> so we're talking today about outcome-orientated business process management. Um, a lot of people are using BPM, but they're not always seeing the benefits that they were expecting or really achieving the strategic goals that they were hoping to um, uh, hit or promise to their board. Between us, our graphics and BPMD, we have a huge amount of experience of really helping organizations achieve those goals with um, uh, outcome oriented BPM. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. So I'm going to hand over to Peter now uh, to give you insight into how we actually achieve those goals uh, and how you can drive that forward. So Peter, over to you. Uh, yes, thank you, Phil. And uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, so as Phil said, uh, myself and sure will go through the, uh, the, the session today. Um, my, my comments are going to be about good BPM, good um, outcome-oriented process management. And you know, I, that's somewhat regardless of the platform you're on, but the principles that are really critical to it. And then as Phil said, we've worked with iGraphics um, on a number of clients. And what you will do is describe how it's done within the iGraphics environment. Um, so if we can just start on the next slide, I think you know, in principle, um, BPMD, who are we? We're a um, niche consultancy that focuses on enabling companies with the process management discipline, if you will, the process of process management. And we've done that across a range of companies. Here's just a selection of those that we've had an impact on. And um, you know, these, are, these range um, across different industry sectors and across different geographies, across different um, sizes of business. And all of them have one thing in common. They wanted to move towards a much more process-oriented way of, of um, running their business. And why to do that, I think, is pretty, pretty clear. We live in a very dynamic environment where it's pretty clear that the, um, the need for a transparent view of your processes um, across the different parts of your ever-changing organization are always need to be in place. So today, what we'll go through in terms of our objectives uh, is a bit of the importance of BPM, um, what we um, have in terms of you know, the potential sort of um, array of outcomes that you can get from good process management, and what you need to have in place with, uh, with it and, and where it's really been achieved. And then um, what Shob will be doing is going through the role of iGraphics in achieving these ends. On the next slide, I think the first thing is, you know, when talk about process, people always say to me, well, that, that's sort of the, uh, the process flow diagram, the events and things, it's very two-dimensional. And it's very important to, to, when you look at process, to make sure that you're looking at it from a perspective of who does what, when, where, why, with what, and to what end. And so all of these dimensions of you know, people, systems, customer data, the regulators, suppliers, partners, all need to be considered. And you're trying to make sure that you're integrating those with, the, 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 um, you know, with your processes, your business processes. And I think that goes somewhat without saying, but when we say good process management, the first tenet is that it is about integrating all of these elements. Um, the next um, important thing is to make sure that we look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. If you look at the next slide, Phil, um, traditionally, we've looked at um, 
you know, if you look at the customer, what they're interested in is the order to cash sort of process, sales, production, shipping. They don't really care where it is in your organization. They would like to have a seamless engagement with you. And what we have done over time, if you build that, the next one, Phil, is put in barriers which have um, but to have been functionally oriented. If you look at most organizations, they have these functional hierarchies. And each of these functions maybe integrates well with each other. And traditionally, where those were working in a um, way that was um, you know, very stable over time, they could sort out the integration between them. But as we, in the dynamic environment we're in now, um, things are ever changing. And the, the connections between the end, these end to end or, uh, parts of the organization, these different functional parts of the organization, just don't happen as well as they might. Next slide. And what's happened is that over time, the systems we put in place are also functionally oriented and have sort of ingrained this independence. And what we're wanting to do through process management, next slide, is effectively, uh, Phil, next slide, is break down these barriers um, and make sure that we're getting a transparent end-to-end -end view. So in principle, that's what we're trying to achieve. So one of the starting points of making this happen is a good value-driven repository management approach. And when we look at a good repository management or the, the database where you store repository information, um, in thinking about it, you need to look at it from a perspective of these five dimensions. Firstly, it's the value or usage scenarios. Um, and that being the starting point for what the repository is going to be used for. I've seen too many repositories where it's launched along the lines of, well, we need to, to be able to map our processes. And so we start by mapping processes. I worked with uh, one energy company that had a major problem with um, their um, you know, gas pipelines that were blowing up. Maintenance was an issue. Proper resourcing of engineers was an issue, et cetera. And um, the president put in place a, um, as a starting point, a, a process lead said, we're gonna sort this through process. It sort of bought the Kool-Aid that process was important. And they started out by um, putting in place a repository tool and then around the repository tool, um, a number of modelers. I think they had about 15 modelers that were modeling the business. And over a period of three years, they were going to model the entire business. A year later, I was looking at this and I said, well, okay, what, what have you done? Well, we're just modeling the business. And where have you started? Well, we've started in uh, HR and legal because we had more documentation in that space. How are you solving the maintenance issue? Well, I'm not sure. What's required to solve the maintenance issue? Well, we'll get there. And uh, the president was tearing his hair out, of course. You've got to look at this the other way around, which is the starting point is, what's this going to be used for? I don't measure a repository by the number of models that are in it or the quality of models within it. Of course, that's important. What you measure a repository by is the value that can be derived from it and how many people are signing up to it and utilizing it? What is the usage um, of it on a regular basis? And that of course is quite telling. Once you've got clarity as to how it's gonna be used, then you can focus on the other four dimensions, which is the co what content you need to support that, what you need in terms of the format to make it more approachable for those value um, and usage scenarios. Who is responsible for maintaining that information? The governance, et cetera. And what tools in addition to the repository tool, but maybe document management, other tools that are required to, to be able to deliver that usage scenario. And it's those five dimensions that you need to look at very closely when you look at putting in place 
um, a good process management environment and support, uh, supporting that by a good process management tool set. Um, and in terms of those usage scenarios, you know, it, the, it should be the one source of truth that's used for a multiple um, series of usage you know, scenarios. Is this about just having our standard transparent um, 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 process information in one place and you want to drive standardization and compliance from it? Is this about the training or onboarding platform? Is this about driving compliance to regulation? Is this upscaling and developing into new markets? Is this the basis for ERP transformation and implementing a system that meets our needs? Is this about recognizing where the needs are for smart automation, et cetera? And actually it's all of those things, but maybe sequentially all of those things and what you're looking for, it's one source of the truth that underpins um, all of those different dimensions. Getting in a repository that can grow with you to meet those ends is, is critical. There are many examples of where that's happened. Here are just some, and these are real value oriented um, um, examples. And I think um, these were achieved through multiple different tools, but um, I think the, the, the top left two are both using the iGraphics environment. And um, you know, the shipping company, I mean, they were focused on creating a transformation plan that was going to optimize the import and export processes. And the opportunity to quote their target is to be able to do that within 24 hours. I won't tell you where it is at the moment, but they are heading towards it, getting transparency of what that um, of what their end-to-end -end process looks like and analyzing where the longer cycle times are and how to bring those down. Um, the medical research organization was uh, aimed at you know, significantly improving the mobilization uh, related to some of their, um, their, their uh, drug trial um, approaches. And each of these, you can see, I mean, an upstream energy company, massive savings as a result of simply being able to get clarity on the procure to pay process. <clears throat> I'll, I'll pause there. I know we don't have a whole lot of time and I want to leave sure of enough uh, time to carry on. So focus on BPM, but focus from an outcome perspective and you can achieve great results. Shreve, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Peter. So what I want to do is, uh, you can go ahead and build out that slide. Yeah. So what, what I want to do is, you know, take what Peter has said about outcomes and how to actually measure and achieve outcomes and also how to break down silos between departments so that you can look at your entire processes and serve your customers better. So I'll go into a little bit more about the how and then we can wrap up. So I've had the you know, good fortune to work with lots of clients. And what I realize is that customers run a complex living, breathing process, right? So it's not just a drawing on a piece of paper. The processes are continuously evolving, changing, transforming. And therefore, if you are looking to manage those processes, you need to make sure that you take that into account, right? So the idea is that to cover that entire process journey from beginning to end. So you start by first understanding how you do business today, right? So that's process discovery. And again, here you could use uh, software for process mining or task mining to figure that out. You can also get input from your business SMEs. But the first part of that is to baseline where you are and what you're doing today. And then once you understand that, you can now design better processes, right? So the idea about design, again, is collaborative. It takes into account multiple people working together uh, so that you can actually get the best possible outcome and make sure that everybody's knowledge is incorporated into the process that you're going to design. And then once you've designed your processes, you, you need to make sure that they're going to work in the real world before you deploy them, right? So the idea here is that you can simulate how your process designs are going to perform even before you deploy them into production, right? So instead of spending millions of dollars 
implementing a process before and then you know before you're ready and then finding out it doesn't work quite as well you can simulate scenarios right so for this if you can take real world data and feed it through your process models to run what if scenarios you can find out which process model is going to create the best possible outcome for you right based on what you want and do you want to reduce cost do you want to increase capacity do you want to improve end user experience you know do you want to comply better so there are multiple outcomes that you can think of and the simulation will help you optimize the outcome that you're most interested in optimizing right so once you do that you can now deploy your processes in production and as you're doing that you can then identify areas for automation you can say well you know th these are the areas where i have bottlenecks or, or this is what's taking too much time i can then target automation where it's most effective right as i deploy them into production and then as you deploy them into production you can also take into account compliance right make sure that all the compliance is handled there are controls you have identified risks you can actually collect audit data that you can show to your uh, auditors and so there's a lot of things that go on in compliance that that you need to cover and then once you are in production that's not where things stop right that's where it actually begins so so once you are in production you're monitoring your processes in real time by connecting to the systems that run them right so the idea is you collect data from your systems and then look at how your processes are performing in production to see whether you can optimize them right and optimization again like i said before could be on cost could be on capacity could be on op compliance it, it could be on end user experience there could be a number of things that you can optimize on an ongoing basis and then finally right as the system is observing your processes run it can make predictions right so the idea here is this is new technology right for predictive analytics where if i know how your processes run for a million times i can tell you what's going to happen even before the process completes right so at the beginning of the process i could tell you that your outcomes are not going to be achieved for example you're going to miss a delivery deadline or there's a compliance rule that will be skipped so you don't go a long way into that process for a few months and then have to roll back or do rework but the system can actually predict problems before they occur and then guide you to avoiding them right so this whole cycle this whole journey for a living breathing process again is totally focused on understanding business outcomes understanding goals that you want to achieve and then helping you do that continuously right so the idea is and this is not a one time thing you know we encourage you to change your processes as often as you want right it's not like you 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 know draw a process on a piece of paper and then a seven seven stone you you evolve it you change it you transform it and and therefore you need to look at that whole process journey continuously and make sure that it's easy to do that it's easy to change it's easy to automate it's easy to simulate it's easy to make predictions right all of that is is then something that you can do on an ongoing basis right okay for so the next slide so to effectively do what i was talking about we designed a platform that combines you know multiple capabilities together seamlessly right so if you look at on the right hand side right you need a good core process design bpm solution that has the process repository your process models customer journeys you know value stream mapping compliance documentation uh your day to day operations of your processes and then you combine that with the on the left hand side with what we call operational intelligence right so operational intelligence is basically taking data from your systems to understand what's going on that understanding could be for process discovery it could be for analyzing the root cause of a problem it could be for predicting the future it could be optimizing your process designs you know uh, doing simulation all of that right so if you marry the two together right if you take a, a good repository core bpm practices collaboration all of that stuff and then combine that with real time data with real time analysis now you have something that can really deal with the real world to deliver those outcomes right and then last but not least you also need automation right because automation is a big part of efficiency gains but it's not just efficiency or cost right it's also improving your customer experience because if you do something faster or you do something more efficiently it means less wait times it means that your customers are not frustrated it means that you're not asking for the same information over and over again so automation is a big part of optimization and so a good solution can also 
uh, needs to make sure that you can do automation well. And here again, you need to look at automation from a broad perspective, right? Not just RPA, because RPA is one aspect of it. There is automation for you know, workflow management. There is automation for managing systems. There is conversational automation. There are you know, digital guides that can help you do your work better. So automation is a big spectrum of things and process management is a big part of automation, right? So, so what we have done at iGraphics is combine these capabilities together into a single platform that we call Process 360 Live. 360 because it's looking at processes from all angles and live because it's real time, right? It's connected to systems and is giving you information that you can act on. Okay, so next slide. So, so again, I'm just showing you an example of how this might come together, right? And again, Peter in the beginning talked about breaking silos, right? So here's an example of a customer journey, right? So here, what we're looking at is, okay, how do your customers or external parties interact with you? What are the internal departments, right? So if you look on the top, there's a number of departments, right? Outflow, anti-money laundering. This is a banking process, right? You got, you got a number of different departments within a company that do different things, which are on top. And then each of the circles is actually a process, right? So this is not a BPMN diagram of a single process. This is a representation of the entire customer journey for a given solution that you provide or a product or a service, which have multiple processes and multiple paths through multiple processes, and as well as you know, looking at who's doing them and looking at where the external interactions occur and so on. And then overlaid on top of that are metrics, right? So the idea is that this is connected to systems. So you can look at, okay, well, how many applications support this entire customer journey, right? How complex are they, right? Where are my vulnerabilities? What does it cost me to do something? You know, which is the fastest path through the process? Why do I have 20 paths as opposed to only three? Because, you know, the other 17 of them are not that important, right? So why am I maintaining them? Why am I spending money on them? So the whole idea is that you can look at your entire product or service at a glance, look at all the departments that service that, look at all the processes that service that, look at all the paths through them, and then overlay any kind of metric you want. And then if you click on it, right, if you click on a circle, then you can drill down into that particular process and see all the activities and, and so on and so forth, right? So as a product owner or a, a solution owner, I can get a view that shows how my solution is doing, right? I see all the processes, I see the complexity, I see the risk, I see the cost, and I can also see them, you know, week over week or month over month or quarter over quarter to see how, how we're doing, right? So this is where the evolution of BPM comes from, right? It's not just something that you model your processes on and draw a picture and forget about it. It's something that's connected to your systems, that's updating on a regular basis and then actually giving you something useful to run your business, look at the outcomes, define the outcomes, define the strategy and go achieve it, right? So this is what, what, what we are looking at as a combination of all the different capabilities that actually shows you as an end user what's happening. Okay. <clears throat> so I think with that, I can hand back over to you, Phil, uh, take it from here. Well, thank you very much. Um, we've actually got a question from the audience as well, and this will, I'll, I'll pass this out to both of you. But they've asked, um, what are some practical steps we can take to ensure that our BPM initiatives are truly outcome orientated? So, Peter, what are your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so I think I, I covered a lot of that during my my presentation. You know, that what to do. Principally, it's recognizing that you're creating a knowledge center. Um, and around that, you need to, one, have the proper structure in place such that it is a reflection of your organization. So if you will, it's, it's um, a mirror image of your organization. And it needs to be that one source of the truth. And secondly, you need to put the right governance in place so that it is that one source of the truth. I've seen too many um, um, BPM initiatives that have been driven along the lines of, well, we put in place this repository tool, but actually it, it's a modeling tool that we treat as a bit of a desktop and everyone creates models and you know, there's a plethora of good stuff, but there's not this one source of the truth that is outcome oriented, very clear who's gonna maintain it and, and, and what, uh, what is gonna be used for and by whom and under what conditions. So getting that set up right up front 
saves a lot of time down the line. Yeah, so I want to add something to what Peter said, right? I think the most difficult part is defining the outcomes and figuring out how you're going to measure them, right? So, so if you want to have an outcome-oriented BPM implementation, you got to define the outcomes. And, and this sounds straightforward, but it's hard to do, right? So what business outcomes do you want to measure? Like which departments are going to deliver them? Are they bought into it, right? The, the main problem I see is, okay, fine, you know, you have some process analysts define some outcomes, but the rest of the organization doesn't even believe that they're important, right? So getting a buy-in on the outcomes, defining the outcomes and, and defining a way to measure them I think it's really important and a lot of times it's overlooked because people think, okay, I put a system in place, it's automatically going to work, but I think defining those outcomes are important. Yeah, fantastic. I, I would absolutely agree with both of those. I think it's so important that you've got that buy-in and that centralization uh, to make sure that, like you said, Peter, we're not just drawing in documents or, or pictures of processes and creating a lot of good stuff. It's actually how it's contained together and uh, aligned with those outcomes. Um, gentlemen, thank you very much for the time today. I think it was a very uh, insightful session uh, and I hope um, the people out there who've had a chance to, to watch or are watching the recording get a chance to uh, reach out to us um, to discuss your BPM journey. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, synergies on how we can help you progress that uh, and explore ways to actually drive more outcomes and more uh, success in you hitting your strategic goals. So thank you very much for today. Thank you to Peter. Thank you, Shaub. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye now.